Hello, my name is Abby and I'm at the Queensland Museum. I'm on an important mission to save the turtles. I'm here to discover what we can do to help save our marine mates. Now, this is a big mission, so we've called in a big name in the biz. Meet Patrick Cooper, a.k.a. the Turtle Expert. He has an amazing display here for the World Science Festival, which will help us and our mission. Patrick, where do turtles come from? Well, these turtles come from Mon Repos. Have you heard of Mon Repos? It's a beach up near Bundaberg. Ooh! And Mon Repos is uh, where scientists have been monitoring turtles for 50 years. Wow! In Finding Nemo, there are two turtles called Crush and Squirt. Do the turtles really ride the EAC? Is it really true they do? Yep. Do you know what the EAC stands for? East Australian Current! That's right, and they do do it. So these little loggerheads, when they hatch at Mon Repos, they run down the beach, they swim about 80 kilometres offshore, and they get picked up by the Eastern Australian Current. Wow! And that takes them down the Eastern Australian coast, past the tip of New Zealand, and over to the coast of South America. Oh my goodness! Do they go to California? No, they don't go to California. But once they're over in the coast of South America, off Chile and Peru, they stay there before they get back to Australia. It's about 16 years. And when, 16 yeah, years? Yeah. That's two years of my age. <laughs> and and, and when, when they get back here, it's another 14 years before they're big enough to start going and breeding at the nesting beaches. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. What did the turtles eat? Well, when they're little like this, they ride on the surface of the ocean currents and they're eating anything they encounter. So they're eating little invertebrates, little things like uh, larval fish, um, small squid, any insects that fall out of the atmosphere. Yeah. But, but while they're doing that, that makes them very vulnerable to eating plastics in the ocean too because they yeah. pick up little floating objects. Yes. And when they grow to adults, they're eating things like big crustaceans, so crayfish, crabs, and they eat mollusks, so shellfish. Do you become a turtle expert? Well, I'm not really a turtle expert. I, I sort of am. I, I work here as senior curator of reptiles at the museum, and I, my knowledge of turtles comes from working closely with Colin Olympus, who runs the turtle project within the Department of Environment and Science. So I've done studies on nesting beaches. I've helped him catch turtles in Moreton Bay. I spent three weeks up on Crab Island off Cape York with my wife at one stage Where's monitoring Crab Island? Right up near the tip of Cape York in far north Queensland. Well, these are our transparent incubators, and we put the eggs in there so the public, when they come through, can see the turtles hatching. So normally this happens at the bottom of a nest chamber, 60 centimetres below the sand, and nobody can see what's going on. So we do this where people can actually watch the whole process. What is an incubator? An incubator is a container with a controlled temperature, so we try and keep these temperatures around 29 degrees because that's a suitable temperature to hatch the eggs out. How long does it take for them to hatch? It depends a bit on the temperature, so cooler temperatures take longer, but the first of these eggs started hatching after 50 days incubation. Oh, <laughs> I love it when I see baby animals like these. Yeah, well, little turtles are really cute. Everybody loves these little turtles. Yeah. Are any of these guys ready for a swim? They may be. Why, would you like to put a turtle in a tank for its first swim? I think that is, sounds wonderful. When you hold it, hold it like that and just put your finger gently on top. Can you do that? So hand out flat and just put your finger gently on top, not too hard, gently, and just bring it up. And if you just put it over there and drop it in. Yeah, there you go. Yes! How's that? that He's enjoying that, awesome. isn't he? How long do turtles live for? Nobody really knows because uh, no single scientist has managed to follow a turtle right through its whole life. But we know the turtles that are nesting at the beaches up at Mon Repos start nesting when they're about 30 years old. 
and some of those turtles they've been following for 40 years. So we know that at 70 years of age, those turtles are still laying eggs, those eggs are still hatching, and the feeling is that turtles probably go to about 80 years of age. They probably don't make it to 100. Oh, wow. How big do they grow? Well, in that 30 year period, they go from these tiny little hatchlings to adults that have a, a carapace, which is the shell length of about a metre long. Oh my goodness, that's as long as a turtle in a wildlife park. <laughs> and we can show you an adult turtle, so there's, there's one okay. out on display out there, so we can show you how big they grow. Okay. Whoa, this is the biggest turtle I've ever seen. Well, that's a loggerhead turtle, Abby. That's um, the same sort as you're looking at with the little babies before. Aww, and and that one would be about 30 years old, but they do yeah. get a bit bigger than that. And at that size, it's ready to start laying eggs. How many species of turtle are there? There are seven species of, of marine turtles in the world, and we have six of those here in Australia. I want to know what type of turtles are crush and squirt? Crush and squirt from Finding, Finding Nemo. Nemo. Uh, they were green turtles. Green turtles? Yes. Wow. Did you see what I did? You so totally rock, squirt! So give me some fin. Noggin. Dude. These turtles have a big journey out of us. What can we do to help them? Well, there's so many things we can do to help turtles, especially when they're little. You know, things like driving on nesting beaches with four-wheel drives isn't a good idea. Turtles get either run over or, or stuck in uh, wheel tracks. If you live near the beach, you can uh, be sensitive about the lighting. The little turtles find their way to the sea because the horizon over the sea is lighter than that on the land. So if we've got street lights and house lights in behind the dune, some of those turtles wander inland. But one of the major problems the turtles have now, particularly the little turtles, is with plastics in the ocean. Ocean. Plastics are really bad and plastics are everywhere. So to show this, I went out and started collecting plastics. So this case shows plastics that are washing up on beaches. Some of these are from Queensland, there's some from New South Wales. I've got samples from Florida. Um, that little piece there, somebody collected for me from South America and the plastic gets really bad when it starts to break down. So these hard plastics, when they break down in the sunlight and in the ocean, they're the sort of things those little turtles eat. And we're finding that lots of little turtles have plastic in their guts now. Oh, that's sad. So what we've got here are samples of plastics that have actually been taken out of the guts of turtles and seabirds. These things are killing our little turtles out in the ocean. So this little bit of cable tie here was taken out of a small turtle and it blocked its gut and killed the turtle. And plastics like that are also really, really bad for seabirds. Oh no! So this bird here is called a flesh-footed shearwater and it comes from Lord Howe Island. And this plastic here was taken from the flesh-footed shearwater colony on Lord Howe Island. It's been all picked up at sea and brought back by the adult birds to feed to their chicks. Patrick, what do you have here? Well, these are the winners in an art competition we had. We had a competition called uh, Hatchery Crusaders, and kids at various schools made uh, turtle artworks. So that's something else you can do, Abby. You can reuse plastics and uh, be creative with them. So instead of throwing them out, you can make wonderful artworks like this. And you know, you, you might like to make one at home that your parents can hang on the wall and uh, decorate the house. What do you think? And it's good if you do it with plastics you pick up out of the environment. Yeah. So if you go to a beach and get a hold of litter off a beach and make some nice artwork out of it. So 
so Abby, you can see why plastics are really bad. We've all got to change our, the way we use plastics. We've got to think about recycling. We've got to think about saying no to plastic if you don't need it. If you're buying things in shops and they've got heaps and heaps of wrapping, try and avoid it. The plastic is really bad in the environment. We're talking now that there are 8 to 12 million tonnes of plastic going into the ocean every year. Oh no! There are over 100 million tonnes of plastic in the oceans now. We're making 300 million tonnes of plastic a year and every 11 years that figure's doubling. So we've got to start saying no to plastics, have other things to use, and there are alternatives. And I'm going to give you an alternative. Have, oh. you, have you heard of a bamboo toothbrush? Have you got a bamboo toothbrush? No. No, well this is just like a normal toothbrush, but it's made out of bamboo, so you avoid having a plastic toothbrush, and I'm going to give that to you, and you can try using that. Now, it's a bit funny when you first use it, because it's sort of like putting a bit of wood in your mouth, but you get used to it very quickly, and it does a very good job of cleaning teeth. So you can, so you can start buying things in the shops that aren't made of plastic, but do the same job. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's all right. I've never used a bamboo toothbrush. Well, before. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so there you have it, everybody. This is how you save the turtles. Use plastic-free products. Always recycle. And if you see plastic on the beach, turn it into artwork. My name is Bobby. Thank you for helping me save the turtles. <laughs>